Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Peter Bjorkvist. I'm with the company Verigraft. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity, and I would like to thank all of you coming this quite early morning after the big party yesterday. So during this meeting, we have heard a lot of interesting presentations about uh, cell therapies and gene therapies, but as you may know, as you may know there is a third leg of regenerative medicine being uh, tissue engineering. So I would like to switch focus and talk to you about some bigger structures now, organs, and how we can personalize them. So first a little bit about us. As you can see or understand from my very complicated second name, I'm from Sweden. So uh, Sweden, um, we have two big cities, Stockholm, where we have the Karolinska Institute, where this company were founded. We have the second biggest city being Gothenburg, the hometown of the Volvo cars and hometown of AstraZeneca R&D. And that's where we are located. So we are a privately funded company. We have a global ownership. We have owners from uh, Switzerland, from Korea. And recently, we have also an American lead investor on board. So that may be especially interested in this audience. So we have also a highly experienced management team. We have built companies before in this space. We have worked with uh, stem cells and, and regenerative medicines for almost 20 years. And uh, we are now trying to, to make this company a success. So what are we doing? We are uh, personalizing organs. And as you may know, there is um, a lot of activities in this field. And I would like to start off by showing you this picture and what has a lobster with this to do. Lobster, they are nice to eat, but they're also a good example of regenerative medicine. As you know, if you, or you may know that, if you take off a claw of a lobster, the, there will be a new claw slowly growing out again. That is not the case with humans, unfortunately. So we need to help uh, human beings in regenerating the body. Most of the organs are not regenerating fast enough to be clinically relevant. So what is the status of this field at the moment? You see pictures like this and you may think, wow, we can make an ear today. But please remember, this picture is showing basically a piece of, of, of chondrocytes that are put together and this is not really a functional organ. You also see these type of pictures. Uh, this is, of course, a bioreactor, and you see that there is a heart lying under the bioreactor. And I would say that this is a fantastic opportunity. I'm a strong believer in, in, in bioprinting myself, but I think pictures like this is at least 20 years ahead in the future. So what is, is the opportunities today? I would say that we are not creating any organs. In, in my company, we are personalizing them and making them clinically useful. And I will show you how now. So we are working with multiple organs, but we are most advanced when it comes to blood vessels. So I would like to, to show um, a blood vessel as the example here. So we start our process today with a donated cadaveric human piece of a blood vessel. Um, Please remember that this has nothing to do with organ donation when it comes to hearts and livers and kidneys, because then you need uh, a living donor. We do not need a living donor. We can use donors that have been dead for many days. And the reason is the following. We apply a first process being a decellularization, meaning that we take off all what can cause an immune response at the end, being cells and DNA. So, you see that we end up with an empty scaffold when it comes to a blood vessel that is basically a tube. And that is the perfect uh, building uh, frame in order to build a new organ or in order to remodel an organ. So this empty tube can easily be stored for a long time, a year or longer. But importantly, we are personalizing this tube. And we do that with a technology that is unique. We use uh, human peripheral blood. So we only need a, um, a blood sample from the patient. That blood sample is mixed with some uh, enhancing factors 
and we are soaking or allowing this material to bind into this scaffold in a process that is only one week. And there are a lot of other uh, uh, groups and, and researchers that has done this over the years. They typically use isolated and pure population of stem cells. And that is, of course, very good, but it's completely uh, different from what we are doing when it comes to the regulatory side. Because if you handle the cells in vitro for a long time, you isolate them, you expand them, you treat them, there will be a lot of regulatory question marks, it will take some time, and it will be costly. We are not doing anything of that. We just take human blood with some enhancing factors, and we soak this structure for one week. So regulatory, very lean, and when it comes to cost and time, it's very efficient. So we end up with something that is personalized, some, something that can be transplanted. So I will now go into, um, uh, first I will uh, summarize this picture by saying the whole idea with this is, of course, to be able to transplant the structure to a patient without evoking a reaction by the immune system. So, I mean, many organs, they are transplanted today, but they are typically the, the vital organs, hearts and liver and kidneys, because we cannot live without them. But the non-vital organs, like a blood vessel, that is typically not uh, used today in transplantation, because we need to pay this very high price of putting the patient on immune suppressive agents for the rest of his or her life. So let's come to what we have done so far. We have a completed uh, preclinical program. Of course, large animals is a good start. So we have studied uh, our concept in both um, uh, short-term and long-term pig studies. You may know that a pig is growing rapid, and in a year a pig is about 250 kilos. So it's a very inconvenient model for long-term studies. So we have done short-term studies in big uh, pigs, large pigs, and the long-term studies in mini pigs. Together we are uh, producing something that is exactly what we are going to do in the human. We, we take a blood vessel from a donor pig, from the slaughterhouse, and we are personalizing the material with the patient pig. And we are transplanting it. And we are looking for four very important um, things that can happen when we transplant. Rejection, occlusion due to thrombosis, mechanical failure, bleeding, etc., and infection. And the, the result is that we have not seen anything about that in our model. So here you see the team at the big hospital, the biggest hospital in Sweden, um, with the surgeons that are operating the pigs. So you can see on the left bottom that there is a good flow. Um, and at the uh, bottom right, you see when we have opened up uh, the vessel after the, the study is ready. And you can see that it's, it's basically identical uh, the piece that we have uh, created or engineered compared to the native surrounding tissues. Even more illustrative may be the graft integration uh, when you look at the cellular level. So you see the upper two pictures are from a native, native vena cava and the two uh, bottom uh, ones are from uh, our personalized tissue and unique vein. And you can see that they are basically undistinguishable. So that's very good. and. Um, so we have shown that uh, the, the integration and the remodeling of the or organ is almost perfect. So our first indication then, it's called chronic venous insufficiency. And you have a lot of blood vessels in your, in your body. You have a very specific blood vessel in your thigh region or groin region being a vein with valves. Valves that are meant to open and close and regulate the blood flow down and up in the legs. If you have failing valves uh, or failing veins of this kind, you have chronic venous insufficiency. And it's about 1% of the population, so more than 2 million patients only in the Europe and US are immediately a target for our treatment. Interestingly, there is no treatment at all for these patients today, so we are in a virgin market. So you can see here more uh, easily the valves. Uh, we have a muscle pump, so as soon as we have the blood down to the, pee, uh, to the feet, the, the muscle pump is pumping the blood up again. And the, when the blood is trying to go down by gravity, these valves are closing. But if these valves are failing, we end up with, with the disease, starting with pain and, and swelling. But unfortunately for the patient, gradually, very nasty bleeding leg ulcers are developed. So, our concept is very easy. We take a piece of this vein from a cadaveric donor, we personalize it, 
with our technology so that we can transplant it without waking the immune system. Um, and as you see, it's basically a piece of a vein with functional valves, not more complicated than that. This would have been extremely complicated to create de novo though, but we are using the mother's own material. So we are uh, right about to start the first clinical trial program. It's a phase two uh, clinical trial in Europe. We are working in two countries. Um, and it's uh, 15 patients in, in, in the first study with severe chronic venous insufficiency. So uh, this is a unique trial. We haven't seen any other efforts to cure these patients so far. So uh, our strategy is to start in Europe because we're a European um, company. We are aiming for um, an EMA approval in Europe. But as I mentioned, we are also having now an American lead investor on board and we are actively right now looking for opportunities uh, on US ground. So please, if you have any ideas on, on that you can help us, being a CMO, CRO, or a, even a key opinion leader, um, we are very interested in that. In Asia, we are, uh, or rest of the world, I would say, we are still having the idea of having a license model. So the business model is, is simple. We are going to treat these patients and we are taking our product to the market in the, in the EU and then in the US. And we have, of course, worked heavily with the reimbursement model, with health economic analysis, etc. and it's a very strong model at the moment. We do not see any competition. Just before I sum up, uh, I would like to mention that we are working with other organs that can be as a teaser. Arteries is a more uh, challenging area because there, there is competition, both from uh, old and, and very established products. For example, the Gore-Tex um, uh, synthetic uh, grafts from Gore. And we have also uh, some companies coming now with CME uh, synthetic material. So it's a very interesting, it's a huge medical need still and, and, and a big market for us. We are also working with tissue and you need nerves uh, and we are working with a longer, uh, bigger peripheral nerve, nerves. If we damage them, it's a big problem and uh, the capacity of the body to regen uh, regenerate them is very limited. So we are transplanting now in large animals uh, these longer uh, peripheral nerves. So uh, both these products are, of course, uh, potentially uh, big products for a company like us. So why uh, am I giving this presentation today? We are known to be very collaborative. So we are e eager to collaborate with, with other players in this space. We are seeking partners right now in the US, as I mentioned. So please come to me if you have ideas here. Um, we have an out-licensing model outside Europe and North America. We do have a license. Uh, in Korea at the moment. And uh, of course, as a small company, the next fundraising is always coming closer and closer. So uh, please keep that in mind. Uh, this slide is just about uh, that we have a lot of support back home in Europe from, from EU level and from uh, Swedish national level, from the government and from, from other organizations. So I would like to end up with this. We have just now a very uh, interesting lobster season in Sweden. So if you catch lobster, you can catch this, but we are eager also to move this concept over to, to humans and, and regenerate our bodies in a more efficient way. So thank you very much for listening. <laughs>